Kia ora, Shah. Uh, Tēnā koutou katoa. Mana ake to us represents a new way of working, and it's a way of working in which it's health alongside of our social sector and education working together for the benefit of young people. Um, but it, it wasn't actually born in a well-being setting. It came from a mental illness problem, and, and that was post-quake. Canterbury looks pretty much like almost all other recoveries in terms of our population. We've seen a significant increases in mental health problems for people um, as, as they recover. And most of the international literature says somewhere between five and 10 years, you, you see a peak and then a drop off for adults. But for children and young people, out to 10 years, there's still problems increasing. And so in Canterbury, in the first seven years after the February 2011 earthquake, we saw an increase of 97% of, of children in our mental health specialist services. And, and obviously that's a, that's a terrible place to be in, but it was also recognised, and one of the election commitments of, of the new government coming in was to, do, to address this. Um, and in terms of addressing it, they, they said we need to, they actually listened to um, school principals who said we're in trouble here. We've got a series of kids who are, who've got problems that we are not used to dealing with and we don't think they're the best people to deal with them. And so the principals themselves identified that. And the, re the response to that from, from government was to say, well, we're going to go with 80 workers in schools that are there to, to support our children through primary and intermediate schools in Canterbury. Um, and we also, what's more, we wanted to ramp up really rapidly. We, we had the first um, go ahead at the end of January 2018. It was announced by the Prime Minister on the 22nd of February, our anniversary day of, of 2018. And then the first workers were in place by April. And so it was about getting uh, a program up and running really quickly. Um, we needed a way in which we could engage in, in a different setting. And so for Canterbury, we, we went to um, something that we knew had worked within health circles. And so our Canterbury Clinical Network, our alliance, was a way of working in which we knew it engaged people across the health system. Um, it had strong leadership. It was independent. So it didn't belong to anyone. It actually belonged to all of us. And it's a mechanism for designing services and designing systems to work for people based around people. And so in the case of Manaake, we thought it's a way in which we can move forward and think about how we get a design of a, a service and a new system based around um, children and schools. And so our, our challenge was really to convert something that had been um, successful in a health setting and to see if we could engage and bring new partners in across schools, education, social services. Um, because we'd had partnerships in place, we were also fortunate enough to have gone out to schools just at the end in the last week of school of 2017 and asked them what was it like for them um, and, and what, were the, what were they doing. And almost all of those schools had initiatives in place. The fact that almost all of them were different was a bit problematic and very few of them had an evidence base. They were just doing something to try and innovate, to try and meet a gap. They also told us they had referrals that went um, to everywhere and the hope that somebody would pick, it, pick them up. So we were creating duplicate work. We created waiting lists um, within health and other, and other services and they were for the same kids. So it was, it was a difficult environment that they, were, they saw themselves in. Um, and they just had a general lack of clarity. So what we found in the, the early February workshop we did with them which was engaging across, across the whole sector, was there were some things that they, we were able to identify really quickly. People wanted timely access. They didn't want waiting lists. 
they wanted to be able to get to support and get to it straight away when they saw that need um, for their kids. And they wanted more knowledge about what supports were actually available, because there was a lot out there um, to support, but it was very fragmented. They, they wanted to see a more presence of health within their schools. They saw public health nurses that came around and visited, but they really hadn't had that higher engagement or that level where they could see people in their schools. They wanted wraparound support, and they wanted to do that early, before, before the problems became more serious. Um, they needed to improve communication, not just with the services, but between the services, so that the, each of the services wasn't using the school as, as their primary hub for communication, that they were communicating between themselves if they were sharing care and support. And they also, they just wanted us to reduce complexity. And they, they brought us another problem as well. We'd had earthquake funding through the Red Cross for a period of time, and a lot of that workforce, um, well, that funding was coming to an end. And so it gave us an opportunity when we thought about 80 workers, about some of the people that might help in that. But we were also conscious we didn't want to grab the next 80 people out of other services that were also under pressure. And so we had to think about a way of approaching it for a new workforce. So, um, yeah, the challenge that they set us really through these range of opportunities um, was really to think about how we could make the greatest impact with the opportunity that we'd been given. Um, and schools were really clear that they're the hub of the community. They see children every day, um, mostly, um, and they see their families. So they see themselves as a real community and family hub in the same way that general practice see themselves as a hub that knows families really well. Um, so they were really keen to join that gap up between health and education so that they could all meet the well-being needs of children and families. Um, but schools told us they don't know what they don't know. So um, even within clusters of schools, so we've worked through geographic clusters of schools, and from one school to the next, even when they're quite closely located, they didn't necessarily know what was in their community. So one school might know something, another school wouldn't. So um, when we looked at a model that we could use to help impact that wide range of opportunities, we needed to cover from the community, joining the community up through to being able to support individuals and their families because we know that child wellbeing doesn't sit in isolation and it doesn't start and end at the school gate. Um, but school, and schools felt really overwhelmed, as Greg referred to. So um, part of what we also wanted to be able to do was um, support them in feeling really confident about the things that they can do um, and walk alongside them whilst they um, maybe add some practices in that support child wellbeing. Um, but also um, destigmatize that concept of um, child well-being and mental health needing to only be treated by a specialist service um, and, and reaffirming the role of um, really strong adults being able to support children, mitigate their um, anxieties and their well-being concerns and the importance of people doing that in a really consistent way. So we worked with multiple stakeholders in those very early days um, to develop uh, our response, um, which is completely child um, and Fano centered, but within the context of that school community. Um, as Greg said, we have um, 80 FTE now. Um, and to be able to do all of this, we need a really broad range of people. So that's really good for um, the wider workforce in that we weren't taking one brand of person and putting them into the Mana Arke workforce, we were able to be really broad with the range of skills that we have brought into this 
um, workforce um, alongside the providers who, um, who employ those people. Um, and we've had the funding that we got was for three years, so we've got a really, really strong eye to that sustainability of what is it we're leaving behind. Um, so knowing that if we just treat children and families one by one, we're not going to get that wider impact and bigger effect. Um, so flexible and responsive is our byline. Um, and by having by working in clusters of schools, we're able to bring their strengths together and by working across agencies and with workers with a multitude of skills, we're able to really build that range of support. So our approach has been um, shifting in thinking from um, a service to a resource, um, from contracting and service delivery to thinking about how cooperative and collaborative working across schools, across services, um, between services, will allow us to um, build on the good things that are in place already, because there's lots that's great in place, as we've heard across um, all the workshops today. There's lots of really good things going on already. How do we enhance and build and strengthen those? And we needed to do that by building a strong partnership culture um, in multiple contexts. So um, within and across schools, within and across providers, and within and across health, social sector, and education settings. Um, we needed to, um, I guess one of the things that helped us with that was that we were moving so fast that we had to um, really rely on working with our providers, with our schools, to help us frame up what this would look like, to share ideas, um, and to really um, support the development of that culture of trust, evidence-informed responses, and whilst we built that robust infrastructure around us so that we could support quality practice. Um, to help build the culture of partnership, um, we really focused on the outcomes we were trying to, uh, and the vision that we were trying to deliver on, which is um, that Maya and her are um, supported to flourish and thrive. Um, we focused on making progress rather than the processes we needed to be in place. So how do we progress this? How do we do this really well? Um, and we focused on ours, not yours or mine. So really building that joint responsibility for the outcomes. Um, and it was challenging because People wanted to know what do we do, how do we do it, how much of it should we have. So um, people are very used to a service thinking and a contract thinking that's like, I'm big, I should have more, I'm, I'm small, I probably don't have the, the voice here. Um, so really our approach was to work back with those people and say, so how will Mana RK work best for you with your skills, knowledge and in your context? So what we've done so far is that we have our um, ATFTE. Um, they, work, they rolled out um, basically 20 by 20 across um, school terms um, and across 26 clusters of schools that um, run from Kaikova down to just south of Ashburton. So there are 220 schools there. And each of those 26 clusters is quite different in the way that they function and in the supports that they have available to them. Some are very rural um, and some of them are, um, have significant deprivation as well. Um, and some of them have a mix of those things within them. Um, we formed a partnership with the 13 NGOs who provide our kaimahi. Um, and they really do work together to that common view of mana ake is the way we work, um, not a funding stream. And we have Leading Lights, which is um, a little bit like Health Pathways, but focused on education. So from a teacher's point of view, we've brought together our system partners to develop those pathways about what are the things that you can do um, within a classroom with children through to when would you access support. So trying to clarify some of those systems. 
Um, we've developed our evaluation framework um, that looks across the system, looks to pull data together from across the system. And we've just recently asked schools how we're doing. And in terms of kind of where to next, I think the biggest thing in all of those um, our, our language really matters when we're working across systems and when we're moving to a well-being model from a mental illness model. And we've had to be really careful with our language and really consistent with it. And I think it, as we've built the platform of joint responsibility, that sense of crowdsourcing, um, people have heard about Mana Arcade in Canterbury and they want to join, they want to contribute their skills, knowledge and resources to our mana ake kaimahi because they know that if they do that, they're in schools, in communities, and can support families better with that wider knowledge. <laughs>